Many of us have stock whips laying around, and while we might think of as useless, watch what happens when I put this little polarizer I made on it. Now I'm going to adjust my signal strength to zero and normalize everything out, as you can see here. Now watch what happens when I remove that cap. I dropped 1.6 dB. Well, what if I put a different cap on it? Now I dropped 7 to 8 dB. What's happening here is the cap is turning the stock whip into a circularly polarized antenna. And now by removing it, we have the expected loss of transmitting from circular to linear. As you can see, the antenna on the right is actually receiving the signal strength. Now watch what happens when I change out to the opposite rotation helical. Look at that. Signal strength increased. Why? Well, simple. It's a proper rotation cap. And if I go to the opposite rotation cap, well, there you go. Signal strength drops. Making a polarizer such as this one is actually incredibly simple. I'm simply using an inch and a quarter hole saw to drill through an inch and a half piece of polystyrene insulation. Now, the hole saw isn't the smoothest cut, so I'll just rub off some of the extra slag that comes with it. Now I'm simply going to cut it approximately half inch tall. Somewhere between a half inch and three quarters of an inch is just fine. This doesn't have to be very precise. We'll worry about precision later. The next thing we're going to have to do is make a mark for the elements. I'm going to use three elements here, so it's going to be marked at three points. Now you can use anywhere from three to six elements. More elements is better, up to five. The, the elements here are made from a simple paper clip. While I could use copper wire, a paper clip was more handy, and the truth is, it doesn't really matter that much, as long as you're using a piece of thin conductive metal. And I find these thin paper clips work just fine. Now I'm going to use a caliper to make sure I cut it to the proper length. For 5.8 gigahertz, this is between 0.62 and 0.66 inches. So I'm going to shoot for 0.64 inches. For you metric folks, that's 16 millimeters long. Now. There is some adjustment you can make as far as dielectrics, but for this project, you want to be 0.64 inches plus or minus about 0.2. So the bandwidth on these is fairly narrow. So adjusting my caliper, make sure I have the proper measurement. Well, I'm ready to go. The next thing I'm gonna to have to do is bend these elements. And well, the hole saw seems to fit the bill. So I'm just gonna bend my paper clips around the hole saw until I have three of them in the approximate arc the size of the styrene. You can use just about anything you want. And the truth is they don't have to be bent perfectly. The only things that have to be precise in this is the length of the element and to use a very small amount of adhesive and not too much tape as I'll show in a second. While this might seem too good to be true, this is actually how it works. I'm simply adding a small bead of glue to each of the areas where I marked on the styrene piece. And I'm going diagonally a little bit here because the elements aren't going to be straight up and down. So I'm simply going to glue on each of my small pieces of paper clip equidistantly around the center. Again, I'm using three units for simplicity here, but you can use anywhere from three to six, where the ideal number is five. Now you'll also see something here. I am trying to make sure I get the height correct. The pitch angle is very important to getting the proper polarization. Rather than measure the angles, I find it's a lot easier to simply measure the height. Then I'll go ahead and glue on the other two elements. Again, don't worry about this too much, but the angle is important. You want the height, that is the vertical transition of your element, to be one half inch, or again, for you metric folks, about 12 and a half millimeters. Of course, there are two directions of circular polarization, right hand and left hand. And in this case, I'm making a right hand circular antenna. And this is determined by the direction the elements go. So you'll see the elements point downwards and to the right. That's right hand circular. So if you wrap your hand around the element with the way the wires are going, the way facing down should be the hand you use. 
The last thing I'm going to do is wrap a simple piece of electrical tape around the elements to hold them in place and protect them from damage. Now, it's critical that you only use one wrap of electrical tape. Now, if you use packing tape or masking tape, two layers will work. The thickness of the tape is critical as it shifts the dielectric strength of the antenna. While this might seem like magic, it's just physics. In fact, that's how the video aerial system switchblade works. It is just the same thing here, just a little bit more refined than this example. For example, this is the switchblade on my analyzer. As you can see, I jumped 3 dB in signal strength instead of 1.6, and when I put the opposite rotation cap, well, I'm down to minus 30. Now some of you might know that I went ahead and filed a patent on this technology in 2018. But the truth is, so long as you're not trying to compete with me commercially, have at it, have a good time, and I hope you learned something. I might be crazy, and as always, keep them flying.